Welcome to worship at Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Dublin, Ohio. I'm Pastor Jim Wilson, the interim associate pastor here, serving alongside Pastor John Morris, the senior pastor, and as you will discover again today, an amazing group of musicians who make this online worship possible. We do wish that we were able to be worshiping in person right now, and we pray that you are well where you are, and that we're thankful that you are able to join us even online today. This is the second of four Sundays in the season of Advent. There's a lot of darkness out there in this world, and we trust that even now God is bringing light into the world. And so each week we, we light another candle, today too, hopeful and expectant of a new day. In terms of announcements about mission and ministry here at Prince of Peace, the giving tree is well underway and your gifts need to be wrapped and brought back to the church this week so that they can be distributed in time for Christmas for those who are in need. And secondly, uh, Advent devotions have been mailed out and they are available here at the church in hard copy or downloadable on our website. But we hope you are enjoying the Advent devotions and, and are enjoying the discipline of being still and being quiet during the Advent season. Today is also one of my favorite days, which we really will not address in worship at all, but it is the feast day of St. Nicholas, a patron saint of children and generosity. Last night in a lot of the world, children, and none of this good girls and boys kind of stuff, because that's not how the real Bishop Nicholas of Myra rolled. Children last night um, put their shoes out under their beds in hopes that this morning they would find a treat or two in their shoes. Uh, I did, and I hope you did too, but, but if not, we hope that this worship together will be a, a treat for you today, balm for your soul and light in your darkness as we celebrate God's amazing love for all people. Again, thank you for joining us for worship on this second Sunday of Advent. May God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. When God created the world, he made the crown of his creation, the human race, in his image. Perfect people lived in a perfect world, in a perfect relationship with God. But mankind rebelled against God, bringing sin into the world and death to all. God declared the wages of sin to be death. We too are guilty, and we confess our sinful thoughts, words, and actions. However, God, who is love, did not want to be separated from his children forever. He promised a savior who would bear the punishment for sin, defeat the devil, and break the bonds of death. When the time had fully come, God sent his son. Jesus, our savior, has paid the ransom for your debt. Your sins are forgiven. In view of God's mercy, today we light the hope candle. The spirit declares through the psalmist, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love and with him is full redemption. We wait for the Lord and in his word we put our hope.
In the hope of God, we go to the world, to our friends, relatives, acquaintances, and neighbors. We regard no one from a worldly point of view. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. God has committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. Jesus, who had no sin, became sin for us. In him we have become the righteousness of God. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her, that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill will be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass, their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of the good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good things, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judea, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arms rules for him, but reward is with him and his rec recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from 2 Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be? In leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, with righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Praise to you, O Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours through Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, and even now coming into our midst. Amen. I have always had a kind of love-hate relationship with John the Baptist. And yet every Advent, without asking me, the, the church in wisdom trots him out uh, this year two Sundays in a row, today from the Gospel of Mark and next Sunday from the Gospel of John. And there he is, this, this overly righteous, rigid, out preaching in the wilderness the way nutcases preach on a street corner. Everybody they meet, you're dead in your sins, you're dead in your sins, repent, repent. No one in the ancient world was actually clean uh, the way we know it today, but John, John out there in the desert would have made anyone in the ancient world look well-groomed. Camel hair and a leather belt. It's not the stuff you, you, you buy in a haberdashery. This is the leather that, that comes from the camel that you took out into the wilderness and eventually had to eat and skinned yourself. Eating what he finds, a kind of doomsday survivalist. Nothing but, but locust and, and wild honey. And I, I don't mean the, the deep fried or dipped in chocolate or in a little squeeze bottle kind. And then there's all these issues of what I would call self-esteem. I mean, and it's more than just uh, moving out to the desert to be by himself, to get away from other people. And I, I'm not sure he feels good about himself or anyone else for that matter. 
<laughs> Repent, he says. Prepare the way of the Lord. Get yourself straight. Someone is coming, someone is coming whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This is the year of the Gospel of Mark. We just started the new year with Advent. This is the, the second Sunday. We're going to read primarily this year from the Gospel of Mark. Mark was the first Gospel account written. Matthew and Luke and most definitely John come much later. Probably they themselves had read Mark ahead of time. And, and Mark chooses to begin what he calls in this first chapter the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He chooses to begin the narrative about the Son of God with John the Baptist out there preaching and baptizing in the wilderness. The purpose of the whole gospel of Mark is to tell the story of Jesus and to tell it in such a way that, that people will believe it. And, and Mark decides not to begin with, with Mary and Joseph and not with angels and shepherds and farm animals and not certainly with tinsel and glitter and bright lights, but he chooses to begin with John the Baptist. Loose cannon. Seriously. The big question is why. Again, I want to own it is a love-hate kind of thing with me. The call committee has been busy here at Prince of Peace for many months now, the associate pastor call committee. They've been meeting regularly, and the thing is there's not a lot of mobility right now. Pandemic has put a, a damper on mobility. Who wants to move their families during the middle of a pandemic? And, and frankly, with no in-person worship and no visitation in our homes, um, the need for an associate pastor is, is different. And, and for now, at least, an, an old retired guy might be enough. But it got me to thinking, and so, so I'll just ask you, if uh, John the Baptist applied for the position of your next associate pastor, how do you think things would turn out? <laughs> pastor John's grinning right now. He says, well might be an improvement. <laughs> I cannot imagine John the Baptist as anything other than trouble. If, if John the Baptist moved into my neighborhood, moved in next door to me, went to my church, it would make me nervous. But here's the thing. In the church's wisdom, this world and all that's wrong with it right now could use a few more John the Baptist. And almost daily, I and, and a whole lot of pastors during this pandemic are asking God to make us more like him. Here's why. John believed that, that preaching made a difference. John believed that every time God's word was proclaimed, was spoken, was unleashed, that God would make something happen. And I want to let that sink in for just a moment. John thought and bet his entire life on it that God's word would never, ever come back empty. John believed with all of his heart that if he could just tell people what God had already done and God had already said, namely in the message of Isaiah, that we should prepare the way of the Lord and we should make a straight path for his coming to get everything out of the way because a, a good and gracious and loving Lord is coming. And John believed that if he could proclaim that, that it would make a difference. Some of you know that I have been blessed to teach preaching at our, our local seminary a number of times. I always loved doing it, and it was, it was good for me. And I always started by reminding students that the, the hardest part of preaching is not public speaking. It's not finding something to say. It's not coming up with a clever anecdote. The hardest part of preaching week after week and year after year is believing that Preaching makes a difference. And I love that every time John preached, he expected that God would do something. 
I love, secondly, that John the Baptist let everything go for the sake of the coming reign of God. He was that confident in what God had promised. John was so singularly focused on God's message and God's goodness, God's coming kingdom, that he just let go of things. We just finished a a time of focus here at Prince of Peace Church on, on gratitude and on generosity. Financial commitment cards are coming in. This past week was the target date. If you haven't yet, please do. Do, do so for yourself and, and for your family. And I, I have that financial commitment process on my mind as I think of John the Baptist letting go of everything, everything. And I, I'm not privy to financial commitment card information. I do think that the the pastor ought to be, but not the interim associate pastor. But I will hazard a guess that no one is going to have to eat locust and wild honey for the next year based on how much they decided to share with God. Because John knew that the end was coming. The end of all of this, this, this crap that we are enduring right now because he believed what Peter said in our second reading that someday all of this will be dissolved and that we are right now just waiting for a a new heaven wow and a new earth where where righteousness will be at home because he was certain that God was in control and would be in control and the advent of that loving God was so near, rather than than tighten his grip on all of his possessions, he, he loosened it. Third, don't panic, there's only gonna be four. Even by our standards, John was a raving success. Hundreds of people left Jerusalem and Jericho and Caesarea to go out into the desert to to do some life cleansing ritual, something about repentance, something about being sorry, something about doing better than this in the future and washing dirty sin away with water. Even King Herod, who was the richest and most powerful man around, took notice of what John the Baptist was doing. I'm an American. Can you imagine the concessions that you could sell to those people out there in the desert? The swag, the towels, you got to eat. No. Rather than a television studio and a satellite dish and a concessions contract, rather than a bigger house and a bigger salary and a bigger pension, John says, "Mm, nope, nope, nope. It's not me. It's not me. There's someone much greater than I coming. Someone whose shoes I'm I'm not worthy to untie. Somehow John the Baptist was able to get away from this me and me and me and mine first ego that is feeding visions of success that dominates our culture and too much of our lives. John was so affirmed by God, so certain that God loved him and everyone else that he was able to forget what people thought about him and just, just point people to God, that it wasn't about him. Wouldn't you love to be that free? Can you imagine how effective the church could be right now if we worried less about our power and our influence and our status and being right in the world and worried more about the just and merciful reign of God coming into the world? If we worried less about what people thought about us and more about what God thought about them. Fourth, which is finally, if you're keeping track, John lived as as if Jesus was coming. As if Jesus was really coming. I struggled with this sermon this week. I want, to, I want to own that a little bit. We've been working in advance by necessity. Uh, we recorded this message before Thanksgiving, before the first Advent candles were lit, before singing a single Advent hymn, before even the first piece of chocolate out of my Advent calendar. No liturgy to set the table. 
no blue pyramids until I put it on today, none of the, the Christmas anticipation. All we got is John the Baptist. Prepare the way of the Lord. And then I heard the word from Isaiah, from Peter, from John the Baptist, from Mark. I heard the ancient promise that never comes back empty. I heard the promise that Jesus is coming back. And everything started to look different to me as I prepared this message. Now, admittedly, it was, it was just a little bit matrixy. I mean, follow me for just a moment. I mean, if, if Jesus will be back, maybe before anyone ever hears this sermon, maybe I don't even need to write it. Christmas is looking a little bit different this year, right? I'm not sure that my grandkids watch this or not, but if you are, this would be a good time to let you know that Granny and Grandpa are not going out shopping this year. And frankly, that's, that's minor. Some have lost loved ones. Some have lost livelihoods. A lot of us have lost connections and especially holiday connections. I don't remember ever, ever, as I'm sure is the case for some of you, I don't remember ever not being in worship on Christmas Eve, uh, candles lit, and singing Silent Night. And I know that there is a lot of grief right now and a lot of pain and, and a lot of hurt, a lot of confusion. There's a lot of broken in this world and in, and in our worlds. It's a wilderness right now. And this world needs to prepare the way of the Lord. But in some very real sense, let me say that again, in some very real sense, whether with others or all by yourself, we can. We can light candles. We can hear the word, God's word that never comes back empty. God's story that long ago God became incarnate, became real, was born among us. And that, that fills us with hope like nothing else. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. John the Baptist is a, is a kook. Um, he's not just a little unorthodox. Full tilt, all in, truth telling, God trusting, get your act together, confess your sins and make a better way right now. Loose cannon. And this year, more than ever, I thank God that he is. Because without somebody like John the Baptist, it's way too easy to forget the good news that God is coming again. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the residence of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. As we await the Savior's return at the end of time, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Calming God, comfort your people as we watch and wait for your Son's return. Quiet our wearied and troubled spirits with the knowledge of your steadfast love and faithfulness. Feed us this day as we worship and praise you and renew your light within us. God of love, stir up your power among us. Designing God, your glory is visible in all the deserts, mountains, hills, and valleys of this remarkable planet. As stewards of your creation, we are accountable for the use of the Earth's resources. Inspire us to reverently and creatively discharge that responsibility. God of love, stir up your power among us. Just and loving God, while we wait for a new heaven and earth, we long for this world to be a place where righteousness truly feels at home. But instead, our world seems to house more injustice and violence than holiness and godliness. Help all victims of evil deeds to heal and help each of us refrain from actions and attitudes that advance the destructive forces active in our world. God of love, stir up your power among us. Commissioning God, help us honor and reflect your light in our life's work. Watch over all who labor in service to others, especially pastors, counselors, teachers, parents, doctors, nurses, first responders, and all caregivers. Lead all who, who are seeking meaningful work to find it. Guide all in positions of authority to make wise and fair decisions. God of love, stir up your power among us. Caring God, when we are troubled or fall ill, gather us in your arms and gently hold us. Bring relief to all who are broken in body, mind, or spirit. Comfort those for whom the joy of the holiday season will be muted or even missing. We especially ask you to bring your healing spirit and touch those we now name silently or aloud. God of love, stir up your power among us. Holy God, we are grateful for your patience with us, your desire that no one should perish, and the knowledge that your word will stand forever. Thank you for the generations of believers who preceded us. Keep us faithful during our time of preparation for your return. God of love, stir up your power among us. We offer these in all our prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer. 
through whom you will also make all things new, in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. God, the beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope. We praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on this bread and wine that we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. And now we pray together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to take your communion packet, or if you have bread and wine of your, of your own at home, that's also fine. If you peel back the top layer of plastic, it reveals the wafer. This is the body of Christ given for you. Now, if you'll peel back the foil compartment, it reveals the grape juice. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected spirit, 
guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>